class. Glad you was able to come today. I'm glad you're watching. I'm hoping you have your little books with you so you can follow along with this road this morning. All right, today is Sunday, December the 6th. First Sunday in December. Almost Christmas is almost here. And I know you all are looking for Christmas. So let us bow our head in a word of prayer first, and then we'll go into our lesson. So glad to be here today. So thankful. We want to thank you, God, this morning. Just want to thank you for being such an awesome God. Thanking you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for waking us up this morning and being able to just say thank you, Jesus, for another day. We ask that you be with us as we go through our lesson and put me, self, all out of the way and you in front and let me be led by the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and we just love you. We pray for our Sunday school teachers and the whole church family and our pastor and first lady and the whole family. Just be with us. And we just thank you, Lord, for just bringing us through these months that we've come through doing our Sunday school this way. We ask that you continue to be with us and just bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you all. We thank you for our teachers and blessing Sister Randolph and her family that she'd be able to come do her lessons and we all teachers get together and we just do our lesson and try to teach the kids something that they'll know something about you and you know being able to tell their friends about you know Sunday school and about Jesus and we just thank you Lord for all and we ask that you be with us and bless us Lord and all in Jesus name we pray Amen. Alright our lesson today our subject is legacy to live. Legacy. We know what that means. You know, other people, somebody been there and brought that. And that's the legacy. The big idea called through heritage. So we know what heritage is. And today we're going to talk about Jesus, his legacy, heritage, and all that. And we're going to read our lesson story first. And then we're going to talk about that a little bit. Then we're going to go into scriptures where we will be talking about Jesus and his heritage and legacy. A lesson story. Gabby didn't realize how special she actually was growing up in a Dominion household. She often felt a tension between what it means to be black and Latino. Latino. While she embraced both cultures and loved her family deeply, she envied her friends who didn't seem to struggle with identity. On the first day of her sophomore year, she went to her calculus class and saw a new face, the teachers. Ms. Martinez, Martinez was new to the school and was looking forward to working with her students. Gabby began to wonder to her says, is Mrs. Martinez from Dominican like me? Asked the class. She walked up to Ms. Martinez and introduced herself even further. Gabby asked her about her heritage, and indeed she was Dominican. They talked for a while after class about their families, their cultures, and their interests. Gabby left the classroom feeling renewed and proud of her heritage. You know, we need to be proud of our heritage. <laughs> it was nice to find someone with whom she could identify. You know, identify, that means something, somebody can the same as you, you know, do the same things that you do and all that. And it's good for her to know that. All right. So really she was dealing with two cultures, you know, the black and the Latino and all these different things in her life. And she felt, I guess, a little uncomfortable by being there. So when she found her, you know, she was fine. All right, we'll go with the questions. From where was Gabby family? Dominican Republic, we knew that. Why is it important to appreciate your heritage? All right, we all need to know where we came from and, you know, looking back on our lives. And me, I always had a mother and a grandmother and a grandfather and a father to you know, tell us about the things that happened in their lives and where we came from and the things they did, and, you know, different things that, you know, we do. Why do you think Gabby felt so validated after meeting with her teacher? Oh, she just felt great because it's somebody 
know the same thing I know, doing the same thing that I'm doing. And it just made her, you know, feel good. And we, you know, as our history and our culture and all that, and it's not all good, you know. We have sin for people. We have bad people. All that is all lined up in our heritage and our culture. And, you know, and Jesus, you know, everybody wasn't great back then either. So he had, it was sin for things there, you know, and it's still sin for things here now. All right, our scripture. <clears throat> and our lesson is taken from Hebrews 1, 1 through 5, and we have Matthew 1, 1 through 6, and 16 and 17. All right, and I'm going to read from the King James Version, and then we'll go to another version where you might, you know, get a little bit more understanding out of it. All right. <clears throat> In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through prophets. You remember years ago when, in Sunday school, we learned that uh, God would tell these prophets and these prophets, you know, would tell the people what was going to happen. So that's how God spoke back in those days. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And we know that his son is Jesus Christ whom he appointed of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is a radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his power, his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to an to the angels as the angels he had inherited superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son? He didn't say that because there wasn't one son and that was Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And that's in the Hebrew scripture. We'll go to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whom mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hedron, Hezron, the father of Ram, Ram, the father of Amminadad, and Amminadad, the father of Nashon, and Nashon, the father of Salmon, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. Oh, since this rose, what was all those names? Well, that's just the line. It's just not important that we know all the names, but that's how that was Jesus, as we say today, family tree. All right. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, there were 14 generations and all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. So it's 14 generations, and that's how Jesus came down through all those generations. Isn't that something, though? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I'm hoping you go go back and read some of those names and try to say them, but it's good. It's, it's, it's good stuff. And we're learning. What David got to do with Jesus? What you Uriah got to do with Jesus? You know, all that stuff. What's Solomon? And we can read, you know, in Matthew and go back through the scriptures and they will, you know, tell us a lot about that. All right. We're going to do the questions for the scripture. What is Jesus' title other than Messiah? All right, class, you have your boots. What is his title other than Messiah? All right, we go back in our book to Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. And what does it say? It? 
In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in the last days, he has spoken to us by what it is, class, his son. All right, number two. To whom is Jesus superior? Hebrews 1, 4. Go back, it's in your lesson, and you can read 1, 4. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. All right. Number three. Why do you think the Bible provides several genealogies of Jesus? Think this because, you know, we need to know this. You know, we just need to know from what side Jesus came from and this side. So we have to do it separately. We can't all just line up as one. We got to do it in different things. So just like us, you know, we got to have our family and we know our family isn't perfect. We got a good side and we got a bad, bad side. So we need to know the whole thing about Jesus. And that is <clears throat> provide several, you know, several. That means other than one line be several different things. All right. And that is our scripture for this lesson, you know, on today. And now we're going to go back and read uh, back in a different version of the scriptures on the genealogies, and that is Matt, uh, Hebrews 1, 1 through 5. And I just thought that was good, and you might quite, you know, kind of understand this one better. All right, God spoke through his son, so God have made his son. You know, we look to Jesus, no other. He's higher than the angels. He's higher than anybody. So that's who we look to. That's who we answer to. <laughs> in the past, God spoke to our ancestors, through the prophets, many times in many different ways. But now, in these last days, has spoken to us through his son. God has chosen his son to own all things. That's Jesus. All things. Jesus owned it all. And through him, he made the world. The son reflects the glory of God and shows exactly what God is like. He holds everything together with his powerful word. When the Son made people clean from their sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and great one in heaven. The Son became much greater than the angels. Yes, God's Son came much greater than the angels. And God gave him a name that is much greater than theirs. This is because God never said to any of the angels, you are my son, angel. Today, I'll become your father. He didn't say that to them. That was only said to Jesus. Not did God say to any angels, I will be his father and he will be my son. And when God brings his firstborn son into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is what God has said about the angels. God made the angels become like the wind. We all bow down to Jesus and Hit the legacy of him. It's all good stuff when God brought him into the world. And as he continued to be here for the years that he was here, you know, that's a legacy. And that's our heritage class. That's our heritage. And we believe we believe that. And um, Jesus is the found. Jesus has the found and definite word of humanity. He is our perfect example for living into the great faith heritage you inherit from your family. He is also our perfect example of rising above the family drama, you know, all that stuff that happens in that family that can't hold, you can't let all that stuff hold you back from fulfilling God's plan for your life. Even if you don't know your heritage, you can claim this spiritual heritage. You got a spiritual heritage. We just learned from Jesus Christ, God and Jesus. Of all the spiritual our forefathers, people like Abraham, Paul, even Martin Luther King, we have a heritage that where we have come from and where it's going to be. And we just thank God, you know, for Jesus Christ, thanking him that we have a role model and the legacy of, you know, Jesus Christ. 
in the Gospels, Matthew talks about, you know, the different things. The Gospels are about birth, life, and we know about Jesus' birth. It's getting ready to come up, you know, here in December as we celebrate here on earth as Christmas. His life, even his death, and the resurrection of our Savior. The Old Testament in its entirety lays the groundwork for the birth of Messiah. Waiting for that birth. When that birth came, different things, you know, happened. And it is a bridge connecting the human, the humanness of Jesus, the son of Mary, and the stepson of Joseph, to the supernatural Christ, the king, the son of a living God. And we thank God for his son, Jesus. And we thank God for you all, and we pray that you have a good week this week. And, you know, think about what we said today about Jesus and the legacy and the heritage that we have you know, it's so much in our life that we have. And we can always, you know, we can always come to Jesus and he's there, you know, for us. But he's rule of all things, you know, rule of the whole world. Christmas season coming up and we want to, you know, just thank God for let, <coughs> let his son be born. And we know who his mother was. Plans, I know we're not going to say that. We know who his father was. We know all this, and we know how he got here. So we'll talk about that on the next Sunday and all. But just be with us and have a good week this week. And, you know, love your friends. Be around your friends. But be safe, you know, with your friends. And be very obedient. And then show God that you do know him. You do go to Sunday school. You do study your lesson. And just be where you're supposed to be. And continue to keep that distance. Continue to wear your mask continue to be safe the counts going up again but we don't want you to be in that number all right just to be safe wash your hand wear your mask and keep your distance and we'll see you on next sunday god love you so do i